Up next, Oscar De La Hoya, 26 and 0, 21 knockouts. Wilfredo Rivera, the challenger, 27, 2 and 1, 18 knockouts, scheduled for 12 rounds inside the Atlantic City Convention Center. Let's see how Oscar De La Hoya matches up with Wilfredo Rivera on the tail of the tape. De La Hoya, 24, Rivera a little older, the height very similar. They are at the welterweight limit of 147 pounds, and De La Hoya with a two-inch reach advantage. In the unified rule system, 10 points to the winner of the round, three knockdowns, not in effect. The standing eight count, not in effect. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell at all, and only the referee can stop the fight, but the doctors are given input. 10 points to the winner of round nine or less. This is the weigh-in yesterday. Let's take a look and a listen. First, Wilfredo Rivera of Rio Piantres, Puerto Rico. The challenger will bring 147 pounds. Now, the champion, the golden boy from East LA, Oscar De La Hoya. And the De La Hoya fans, uh, Rivera has been happy in every picture we've seen him here. Maybe that should be his nickname, Happy Rivera. Well, he's got a nice payday. Nice payday, he's in a good spotlight here. Even in situations that would seem tense. He's been happy, and underneath the ring, you get a look at some of the things that have gone on. There was a problem with the sound system before. Well, maybe Butterbean has uh, done some damage to the ring. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> some serious problems underneath the ring. Uh, they're moving in some pack increases. It's probably they need some extra support. Uh, I was only joking about Butterbean, but uh, obviously something's given away. It's very rare for that to happen and very rare for it to be discovered just before the main event, unless that was the after effect of Butterbean being in there on a delayed reaction. It could be there's just a soft spot, you know, we don't want anybody to step in a hole kind of situation. We've got a uh, multi-million dollar fighter about to get in there. We don't want any uh, accidents. Well, that's something that they could easily remedy. We're looking to find out what that problem is. With the convention under center crack maintenance staff on the job. And they are going to get people then doing just that and making sure that it's all equally calibrated, I suppose, and that the weight is proper. Maybe who knows what it could be. It could be a splinter of wood cracking. It could be anything. Now they're checking it out with referee Joe Cortez. He'll do his own little shuffle. Make sure that the weight is fine. There was a soft spot in the ring. It looked like maybe a jarring effect. 
And not only would you hate for something to crack underneath, but a fighter could slip if he's in the wrong spot there. So maybe this is uh, seeming to be a voodoo night thus far for promoter Bob Arum. He has watched Raul Marquez get beat. Terry Norris get beat to uh, fighters that he promotes and now he wants the golden boy to fight and there's been a delay and here comes the commissioner and sometimes things like this just seem to basically stamp their impact on a particular evening well they're going to take every precaution before the next fight starts decision I thought Rivera gave away too much early in his first fight with Whitaker before finding himself and then in the second fight he just ran into a fighter that stepped it up a couple notches and could not get the win but much for him to learn from in those situations now it will be interesting he's a righty he did switch against Whitaker in those fights to Southpaw once in a while the word is he'll fight righty all the time here. We'll see. Well, it's an entirely different fight against Oscar. Oscar is going to be aggressive. He's going to be coming after him. Against Whitaker, you're up against a slippery guy who is practically impossible to hit with more than one punch at a time. So the old cliche styles makes fights. Once again, we're going to see different style for Rivera. He's not in there with uh, Mr. Duck and Dodge and Slip and Duke the Deep Knee Bands. He's going to be in there with a fighter who's going to be coming after him, trying to take his head off. And Oscar De La Hoya has had a big year. The victory over Miguel Angel Gonzalez. The victory over Pernell Whitaker. Knockout win over David Kamal. And then the dismantling of Hector Camacho. Looking back at his fight with Miguel Angel Gonzalez in the early rounds of that fight, I've never seen a jab thrown as well, as often, by anybody in that division for so long. It was textbook jab. It was perfect execution against Miguel Angel Gonzalez. De La Hoya has brought so much into his game in the last year or so, and the entourage keeps getting bigger. It seems like he started this ring walk yesterday. Well, I tell you, another thing against Gonzalez that Oscar showed that he can take a good shot. 
Uh, Gonzalez, towards the end of the fight, came on with some strong right hands. Oscar took them well and fought back. You always want to know with the great fighters, can they take a shot? And I think in the Gonzalez fight, De La Hoya answered that question. And a look at the, the so-called Beatlemania aspect that has followed Oscar De La Hoya. The female fans have uh, accumulated to be quite a bit, and of course, you do that, and you're going to have quite a few lucrative paydays as your fan base increases. So there is the look of De La Hoya and Rivera. One very happy-looking warrior on the way in. He's looking serious now. And we'll see how serious it's going to be for him. And Oscar De La Hoya, now trained by again by Roberto Alcazar here. He had been with Emmanuel Stewart. Stewart fired a couple weeks before. And Gil Clancy, now part of the team as an advisor. Well, that's going from one Hall of Fame trainer to the other. Both both Gil and uh, Emmanuel Stewart are in the Hall of Fame. Of course, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated along with your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., Chairman Jerry Gormley, Board Members Gary Shaw and Stephen Katz, Deputy Commissioner John Greco, our four physicians at ringside, Dr. Earl Shaw, Dr. Eric Wormser, Dr. Dominic Coletta Jr., and Dr. Howard Taylor. Timekeeper at the bell, Roosevelt Gilbert. Counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Lindsey Page. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisors at ringside Mario Latraverse and Eduardo Lamazon. The three judges will be scoring this bout on a 10-point must system at ringside. They are Richie Davies, John Riley, and Sergio Silvi. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, working in a world title bout, Number 101, Joe Cortez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from Caesars Atlantic City, uh, let's get her! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white and weighing in at 147 pounds. His professional record stands at 27 victories, including 18 knockouts with only two losses and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the WBC number four ranked challenger in the world, De Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. Wilfredo Rivera. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with black. He also weighs in at 147 pounds. In 1992, he captured Olympic gold, and now, as a professional, he has a perfect record of 26 consecutive victories without a loss, 21 by knockout, and he has won four world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, from East Los Angeles, California, presenting the former junior lightweight world champion, former lightweight world champion, former super lightweight world champion, and reigning WBC welterweight champion of the world, the undefeated golden boy, Oscar De La All right, gentlemen, 
We went over the rules in the dressing room. Ya leí las reglas en camerino. I want a good clean fight. Quiero una pelea limpia. Protect yourselves at all times. Give me good sportsman like conduct. Shake hands, touch him up. Suerte. Here we go, Oscar De La Hoya and Wilfredo Rivera. The main event. The place is rocking. We're ready to go. Hey, hey, I want those cameras. Even though Oscar I want those cameras off the, the canvas. Uh, Rivera certainly has a rooting section here. He does, a native of Puerto Rico. I want his cameras off the canvas. If you're not using it, I'll tell you what, his demeanor hey, would give him fans. His camera got to be off the canvas. Only one up there. If he was a title holder, of course, they could build him up too. Yeah. There's a long rivalry between the Mexican, Mexican Americans and the Puerto Rican fighters. This is just the latest chapter. So the first round, De La Hoya and Rivera. About the same in the height here. De La Hoya has been really coming alive with his left hand in recent fights the jabs on gonzalez the hooks against hector camacho combined with right hands as he was moving de la hoya has put so much more into his arsenal rivera try to out jab de la hoya earlier there's a right hand crowd chanting and obviously if they're in the upper rows and it's Close to being a punch scored, they will roar. So far, both fighters trying to establish their jab. Rivera doing a nice job on his. Right hand by De La Hoya was sneaky. Just missed with the hook. De La Hoya can cross over, and often it's the second punch after the first one that misses which seems to be crucial. He can step in. Delahoy with the right, left hand, just missed. Good stiff jab by Delahoy. Both fighters look very focused, Dave. Focused and... Staying within a short game plan now, a good chopping right by Rivera. It will open up as they put more and more into their game plan right here. But now it looks a little bit like the butterflies and the expectations have taken over for a while. You've got two fighters who are tall and their styles may negate each other for a little bit until one can impose his will on the other. Get jab by De La Hoya. Good right, sneaky one by Oscar De La Hoya. So here came right back with a punch of his own. Rivera, certainly not intimidated in the opening round. He's also got that left jab working pretty good, Dave. He does. Been able to sharpshoot with it. So the battle of jabs marks round one. Some De La Hoya right hands, some Rivera hooks. There's a right from Oscar. He didn't get all of it, but he got a little bit of it. First round, coming to a close. Vuelve un poquito más la cabeza, okay? Tienes que comenzar más con el jab, okay? Just move, move, Cycle. more circles, jump, side to side. Yeah. Side to side, okay? And just busy with the jab. Don't wait for the guy. You gotta be first. All right? Just keep working in here. Para tirarte arriba. Cuando se meta aquí abajo, si lo pones a la derecha adelante, cógelo con esa. Pero la clave es el jab, Wilfredo. Okay? Y esa derecha bien arriba. Okay? Pagaste muy bonito ese round. Wilfredo, cierra el ojo con el jab, con el jab. Pa, pa, ese jab trabajando. Okay? Tiene chance, vamos al cuerpo duro. Second round, WBC Welterweight Championship Battle, Oscar De La Hoya and Wilfredo Rivera. De La Hoya's title up for the stakes here. 
Battle of jabs in the opening round. It's obvious that both fighters are thinking fighters. They're probing for weaknesses, trying to establish their own jabs, waiting for the other guy to make a mistake. It's very early in the fight, and really nobody's dominated so far. Well, between the two of them, these guys have three decision fights with Pernell Whitaker. As far as looking at some indication of how this fight might progress, very patient fighters here. Rivera with two losses to Whitaker. Delahoya with a victory. Now coming out of the strong left hook behind the jab. Delahoya with the second shot throw. Gambles a little bit more now. Rivera coming back at him. Well, Will Rivera may be very, very delighted with a points win. Uh, I think Oscar at some point in this fight is going to open up and go for it. I think he will too. Wants to win impressively. Doesn't want to leave it out here for interpretation especially after what happened with George Foreman two weeks ago here I think Oscar would also like to accomplish something that Pernell Whitaker could in 24 rounds with Rivera which is knocked him out Rivera coming out hook on that right the right hand by Rivera to fight here now it's a question of how good is his chin going to be because the chins will be tested tonight good hook by Delahoy right hand the hook behind it now putting some shots together and that's the one thing he has thus far that Rivera does not the ability to put quick shots together with power Looks like Rivera was thinking about switching southpaw for a second there and then decided against it, and he gets it away. Now we have it up. Now he's going to get caught. Rivera in some trouble. Delahoy opening up with the hook. Rivera smiling at him. I believe it was a counter left hook to call him like that one. As Rivera was on his way in, he was nailed. He's not smiling anymore, Dave. Getting in on Delahoya here, and, 
and the jab by De La Hoya, which would be stopping that from coming in, not operating. We have seen very little of the De La Hoya jab since round one, and that's why he's getting hit with those right hands. He's certainly not taking advantage of the fact that uh, Rivera was very wobbly towards the end of the last round. He's just kind of studying him. Maybe he's looking for a big shot. So now we see the switch by Rivera. We talked about it before. He has gone lefty now, so the right-hand lead is there for De La Hoya. So it would be the double left hook, but Rivera may be doing this also to protect the eye more. Exactly. When he switches to south pole, it's harder to get to the cut. De La Hoya instead goes downstairs with a tremendous hook to the body. Good right hand there. De La Hoya firing the shot. But Rivera has made De La Hoya miss his share, and he's landed his share of right hands. And a good performance by Rivera, no matter how this goes. Well, Rivera was also cutting the Whitaker fight. And he went to the southpaw stance in order to protect himself then, and he managed to last the distance. So it's uh, very early in the fight, and it's a deep cut, but uh, so far this round it has not reopened. And so far, the strategy by his corner to talk the doctor out of it, and the New Jersey rules forbidding the doctor from stopping it, because he would have, have worked his advantage, at least as far as getting him through some more of the fight, and it's his biggest opportunity. Final seconds of the round, Rivera with the left hand, and is the southpaw here, and De La Hoya facing another southpaw, but this time it was unexpected. second round it was a big De La Hoya hook coming in right around that time watch the hook there's, there's the, the eye right there after the uppercut actually as it turned out there it is right on the eye and you see how the glove had a bit of a ripping motion after oh, seconds out seconds out and the follow through ripping motion turned and a twisting impact and they had a lot to do with that cut and it's a nasty one we start the fourth round now, Wilfredo Rivera back to righty after going lefty and staying in the fight in round three. You got to give Rivera a lot of credit for coming back in round three. Not only did he have a good tactic of switching to south pole, he scored with enough right hands. I thought he won the round. Showed a lot of guts, but he's got that looming specter of the eye injury and the attention given by the doctors. So he needs to make a lot happen faster than usual so Rivera may feel like he's weathered the storm let's see what De La Hoya does now very little of the jabbing by De La Hoya since round one and you wonder at some point with all the different training Oscar De La Hoya has been getting all the different advice camp to camp how that's going to affect him over the long haul yeah I mean it's got to be confusing uh, fortunately for Oscar, he's such a great fighter that he probably could win a lot of fights without a trainer. But uh, I don't think the constant switching is doing him any good. Emmanuel Stewart, far different than many other trainers. Now he basically has trainer by committee. can come into play is fight night, especially. Who's your motivator in the corner? Yes, there can only be one voice in the corner. You can't have two or three people talking at the same time. Look, good looking hook by De La Hoya as Rivera went to the body and left himself open. Rivera fighting a very gutsy effort here, enduring some early problems with the eye. Good hook by De La Hoya as he backs up. De La Hoya bouncing here. Wants to be punching off the bouncing, though. He's up on his toes. I 
can't quite figure out what Oscar's trying I to do, Dave. I was about to say the same thing. He's caught between styles, it seems here. And I don't think Oscar can quite figure out what he wants to do. He, that's what he needs to do. There is that jab into the eye. There's the jab passed by De La Hoya. Now he hurt Rivera. Let's see if he goes in. Good luck. Good right hand by De La Hoya. Go home. Big shot of Rivera. And if he forgets all, all the things that he's been hearing and just goes in there and fights, he's going to knock this guy out in the next couple of rounds. Well, he can do that for this fight. But down the road, you... Come on, watch your head, watch your head. Come on, keep going, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The trunk's high. Come on, the trunk's high. You have to wonder how long he can go that way with trainer by committee. Yeah, there's got to be some stability in the De La Hoya camp if he's going to reach his full potential. Nasty eye. Nasty eye by Rivera goes lefty again. As we mentioned earlier, Emmanuel Stewart replaced by Gil Clancy. And certainly, De La Hoya got quality after he lost quality. But we do like to have the same guy time after time. Now, De La Hoya slips. And Rivera gets through. Oh, oh, oh.
Said he may do. He has done it here. He's a lefty. It protects the eye. Opens him up for the lead right hand. So he sacrifices something to get something. Fortunately for Rivera, though the cut is very deep and uh, looks very nasty, it's bleeding not into his eye but down the side of his cheek. So I don't think at this point his vision is obscured. Very fortunate that was not one inch over. Yes. And he's been able to capitalize on his corner talking. The ringside doctor out of stopping this fight in round two to give himself his best chance to win this fight here. And he's up against an offensive arsenal. There's a right hand by De La Hoya. The cut is getting uglier again and deeper on Rivera and maybe getting closer to where it would drip into his eye. If he cannot see the left hooks coming at him from that side, then they will stop the fight. But he hasn't picked at it. It's very difficult for Rivera to think about winning the fight when he's thinking about protecting his eye. It's pretty much what he has to take his choice. To get the eye and go after the win. But he's still coming in, he's still throwing punches, he's game, he's strong, he has his legs under him, but his face is a mess. And there's some of the jabbing that De La Hoya needs to show, but certainly not as consistent and crisp as we've seen in other fights. Right. Another left hook behind a miss. I can't figure out why De La Hoya's backing up. He's got the advantage in power. He's got the other guy bleeding, but he's bouncing around the ring. He's backing up. Why doesn't he take it to this guy and get it over with, Dave? Well, that is the effect, I believe, Nigel, of the revolving door with the trainers. You're getting different advice. Maybe if you don't believe any of it, you freelance out there. And that seems to be some of what's happening to De La Hoya here. But leave us not, leave out the fact that he has a knockdown to his credit and has to be comfortably ahead on points in this fight. No doubt about it, he's winning the fight, but you think that sometime soon, he's gonna have to finish this guy out. Halfway through the fight. Tonight. 
Percy Richardson walks around with swabs hanging out of his mouth all the time. He's always ready to go. And more than so many trainers takes the full advantage of that break period. Does he take those swabs out when he goes to bed? I don't think so. Yeah. Levy wakes up with them. So now Della Hoya stalking Rivera here. Rivera on the outside trying to pepper. And Alfredo Rivera has kept himself game and competitive. Maybe trailing on the scorecards. We think by a fairly good margin. But he's shown a lot of guts and determination. Attempted finish in Oscar De La Hoya. Fair is still strong, though. His legs look very sturdy. He took those punches well, and he's coming back in, throwing some jabs and some right hands. And when he does, Oscar backs off. Now, what's different about this fight than others for De La Hoya, he showed those three punches early in this round. But in recent fights, we've seen him put 10, 12 punches together behind that. And we're not seeing the long combinations tonight. We're not seeing sustained attack either. We're seeing Oscar fighting in spurts rather than going after his opponent, a wounded opponent, an opponent who's at a disadvantage. And Oscar is taking a lot of right hands. Now, those right hands aren't howitzer shots. Not like Oscar's throwing, but he is taking them. And Oya is sitting down, trying to land a big left uppercut. It came up short. Final minute of round seven. Rivera has taken a beating, but is still there. De La Hoya trying to sucker him in, fake him. There's the big hook, another one, which will test the vision aspect of Rivera, who comes right back, though. Rivera's taken a lot off of Oscar's punches. He's rolling with them. He's partially blocking them. Not that one. He got that one in, but it didn't really hurt him. That one landed flush. He gave Oscar the old dipsy doodle, and he stalled his attack instead of just barging right in there. De La Hoya firing a shot from outside. Did not quite get in. Final seconds in round seven. Goes in the books. When he uses it, Oscar's jab is punishing. champion there, kid. A little bouncing back and forth, bang, snap those punches. Muy fresco. Tú sabes que va a ser grande esta victoria. Sí. El venir de atrás, así. El venir de atrás. Cortado y todo. Y vamos, a, vamos a tener la presión. Wilfredo, el hombre está quedado. Está bien, Wilfredo. Está, está bien para seguir, ¿eh? Está bien. ¿Cómo te sientes? ¿Cómo te sientes? Chao. 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 Some action from that round. De La Hoya with the bomb there, the good left hand coming through behind the right hand. This was a big chance for him, Nigel, but he did not finish the job here. Nice right hand, landed flush, but the still has his legs under him, and Oscar does not follow through with another punch. Uh, seconds out, Percy. So we go to the eighth round. Oscar De La Hoya encouraged between rounds about bouncing. Corner likes it. Now, if he puts any jabbing with that, it will be a formidable combination. See De La Hoya moving his head a little bit more here, trying to work his way in. It's also kind of unusual for Oscar to be fighting opponents who's as tall as him, yes. whose reach is almost as long, and I think that that's having some effect. Well, his punches have to try with a different look than the right hand by De La Hoya. Oscar's the jab is not as automatic as it has been against other opponents. Oscar's had a lot of physical advantages over many of his opponents. Uh, guys moving up from other weight divisions. And uh, he's fighting a natural runaway here tonight. A guy who physically matches up very well with him. And a guy who doesn't give away the jab as easily because of his own height. So Oscar De La Hoya 
firing an up jab here. again which protects the eye and also makes him vulnerable to that lead right hand. De La Hoya being coached to try an explosion off of this stance and there is the right hand his corner was calling for. Corner looking for one bomb here. Rivera dropped back by a jab and their feet tangled as well. He goes back to righty. You know, for this day and age, Oscar's had a lot of fights this year. And I think that uh, perhaps his busy schedule and his schedule outside of the ring, which is almost as grueling. Oh, good luck to him. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez acting on the advice of physician at ringside, Dr. Howard Taylor, has to call a halt to the bout because of a severe laceration suffered over the right eye of the challenger. The winner by TKO victory and still the undefeated welterweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Well, Oscar De La Hoya does the job, really increasing his offense in the last few rounds and beats a very game. Also a very skilled Rivera. He showed that his potentials were legitimate really brought a lot to the table when he was hurt. He changed the southpaw to protect his cut. A tough, intelligent fighter, a good fighter, but I think he was in there with a great fighter tonight. And De La Hoya only allowing 
17 percent of Rivera's punches to land. Now some of them were some big right hands, but for the most part, De La Hoya slipped a lot of punches, and that's sometimes an underrated aspect of his game. Let's hear from Oscar now. Congratulations. You asked to make a statement before the interview. What is it? Well, first of all, um, with Fred Rivera, he's a, he's a strong man. He has a big heart. He's a good man. I admire him so much. His people, um, they rooted him on. Thank you very much for supporting me also. But uh, also to my people, thank you for all the support. Everybody all over the world who supports me, who uh, thinks of Oscar as, as one of the best. I appreciate all the help, all the support, all the admiration that they feel for me. Y este, un saludo a todos. Gracias por todo el apoyo. A Cabo San Lucas, a Ramirez, Durango, Mexico, a toda mi familia en Los Angeles, and East LA. Thank you. All over the world. All right, Oscar. Now to the fight. Yes. Um, you've, he's probably the strongest guy you fought. Do you have to start fighting these bigger, stronger fighters that, that you have fought before in a different way at all? I think so, because... Um, I mean, it's like uh, it's like saying welcome to the to the with the big boys, you know. I mean, um, this guy's a solid Walter weight. I give him all the credit in the world. He took he took some good punches. When you saw the cut, did you think they were going to stop the fight early? I was hoping they would not because um, I wanted to have the experience. Um, I wanted to feel um, in there with a, with a strong opponent. I felt about five, six, seven good rounds off him. I felt real strong. He felt strong and. Um, you know, I'm just very happy they did not stop the fight in the first few rounds. Uh, it seemed noticeable that you weren't making a point of going for the eye. A lot of fighters would do that. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I think so. I mean, when fighters see a cut or see blood, they go for the attack right away because they know they might stop it in the next round. Once I saw blood, I got excited for the uh, first few seconds, but then afterwards I said to myself, just calm down. The knockout will come. The decision will come. Win your fight. Just don't worry about the cut. Um, be, around the seventh round or so, between the rounds, uh, your trainer Robert Alcazar was talking to, and Gil Clancy said to you there, "Act like a champion." What did you think he meant when he said that? I don't know. Uh, um, he said, "Act like a champion." I started. I started uh, to remember about uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, how cool and collective he was. You know. Um, all these old-time fighters that the way they used to conduct themselves up in the ring not get excited not jump up and down they see blood they get a uh, like if they just want to attack and, and end the fight just stay calm stay cool and be a professional up in the ring uh, it, it appears now obviously that Terry Norris is out of the picture as a big fight for you in the spring where do you see yourself going who do you want to fight next year after five defenses of titles this year well, it depends. Um, depends how I feel. I had a, a good workout this year of 1997. I trained for about nine, ten months. I didn't get tired, or I'm not tired of boxing whatsoever. But um, to stay a champion for a very long time, you cannot be fighting so often. Um, it's nice to take uh, the necessary rest, but uh, also spend time with your family, go vacation, take care of your take, take care of yourself, take care of your body, and just um, fight as a champion should fight maybe two, three tops four times a year. Okay, so let me throw some names at you. Uh, uh, Felix Trinidad has said he wouldn't fight you at 147, that he would wait for you to come up to 154. Any chance of that? Oh, there's a big chance. Anything is possible. Um, with my people, my advisors, my lawyers dealing with that side of the business, I have to um, really think about who I want to fight next, of where I want to fight next, and um, just plan out my career perfectly so I can last very long. Thank you very much, Oscar, and at this rate, you will. So, Oscar De La Hoya coming up with a nice performance here that uh, able to put together some fine defensive skills and talking about the toughness of the welterweights, legitimate welterweights, how he was pretty much forced to fight these stronger guys and to make changes game plan we saw some of the changes tonight
I think we're going to see further changes as Reed finds his skills and settles into one trainer. Uh, yes, Rivera, as we pointed out, was a legitimate welterweight, not a guy coming up from the lightweight or the super lightweight division. And he was also very tall, so that took away the easy jab that De La Hoya could have. He had to fire the up jab here. So basically what it made him do was think more on his feet in this fight. Big knockdown with the right hand throughout this fight. On several occasions, this fight looked like it might be over, but it was finally the shots to the eye area and the deep cut which forced this to stop. And we're waiting for Fred Rivera to come over to Larry Merchant. Um, Rufredo, thank you for a courageous fight. Was the blood from the cut getting in your way because you seemed no different in the fifth, sixth, or seventh round than immediately after the cut? Uh, la sangre te estaba molestando, te caía en el ojo, porque aparent, aparent, aparentemente en los asaltos quinto y sexto como que no había, no tenías problema. Sí, me estaba afectando. It, it was eh, affecting me. Pero yo este, estoy entrando para pelear y ser, yo soy un boxeador creativo en ring. I, I'm a very creative boxer, so I, uh, I know how to, I how to deal with these deals, with these problems. Eh, yo traté en todo momento de darle una gran pelea a la gente de TVKO, HBO y, y Puerto Rico en Navidad. I tried as hard as I could to give everybody from TVKO and, and HBO a, a, good, a good fight. And, Puerto Rico, and the people like, from Puerto Rico. When you're cut like this, Larry, his attack is a body attack. He wasn't able to go to the body. Would you characterize for us the punching ability of Oscar De La Hoya as a welterweight. Tú no puedes dar la característica de los los puños de Oscar De La Hoya como en, en este peso de de welter. Él es un boxeador bien rápido. He's a very fast uh, fighter. Eh, tal vez no sea muy fuerte. Not very strong. Pero cuando uno es inteligente como lo es Oscar De La Hoya. But when you're as uh, intelligent as he is. Eh, es es eh, no hace falta tanta fuerza para ganar una pelea. You don't need, you don't need to be very strong to uh, win a fight like this. Oscar de la Hoya is tremendous champion of the world. We heard that, and we appreciate your showing here tonight. Thank you very much again. And that is the words of Wilfredo Rivera. Very good fight. Well, we're glad you joined us here for Nigel Collins. This is Dave Fontempo saying so long from Atlantic City, everybody, and we'll see you next time.